Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Last time we began the book of Job, we got through chapter 1, verse 12, so we'll pick it up right there in verse 13. Get your Bible, open it up to Job chapter 1. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Study all of God's Word with me using my audio Bible commentaries, my audio Bible messages. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen. Study any part of the Bible or begin in the beginning. Go all the way through the end. However you want to do it, there are four completed series going through the whole Bible. This is the fifth at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, chapter 1, verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and daughters, Job's sons and daughters, were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. So evidently this was a typical day of fun and games for Job's children. That means, of course, it was a day of prayer and sacrificing and fasting for Job on behalf of his children. 14. And there came a messenger unto Job, and said the oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burnt up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away. Yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. The moment that the wall of protection was lifted by God. The devil shot through like a rocket and hit Job as hard as he possibly could. Everyone has their share of trouble. But when you see this type of machine gun style of trouble from every direction, that's not normal. That's not your average everyday trouble. This kind of trouble almost always indicates demonic activity. 20. Then Job arose, tore his mantle, shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Job may have felt bad. I'm sure he felt bad. He just lost all of his children and a good part of his wealth and his servants. But he still worshipped God. In fact, it seems like it was the first thing that he did after getting all this horrible news. Which leads me to say this. We don't have to be happy to be holy. And sometimes it's not even appropriate to be happy, but we can still be holy and we can still worship and praise God. And that's what he does. Look at 21. Let's read 20 along with it. Then Job arose, tore his mantle, which was a sign of grief. I mean, the guy was filled with sorrow, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job did not curse God when he lost everything because he understood 
that Job's children and his possessions were not his anyway. Job knew that. Job knew that God had the right to take them back any time he felt like it because they were his. 22. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God with folly. These terrible tragedies were hard on Job. And he didn't know why they happened. He had no idea what was going on behind the scenes with Satan and God. God never did give Job an explanation, at least not according to this book. He never told Job what happened. He never gave him an explanation. But Job did not respond in a sinful way, and Job did not blame God. He didn't say, God, you're unfair for doing all these bad things to me. Well, you know, when you're a sinner and you know you're a sinner, and you know that all you deserve really is physical death and eternal hell, you're not going to complain to God. As long as you're alive, you're not going to complain to God. You shouldn't. Complaining is a sin. And number two, if you look at things in line with reality, really, you have no reason to complain. I have no reason to complain. Chapter 2. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. In other words, Satan shows up with the holy angels once again, a repeat of Job chapter 1. Look at 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, From where comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro, in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Again, God asked Satan, where are you coming from? Satan says, I've been prowling around, you know, checking things out, going to and fro throughout the earth, as the Bible says, seeking whom he may devour, looking for somebody he can turn away from God and send them to hell after they die as a result. That's what he's doing. That's what he always does. Par for the course, for the devil. Three, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and shunneth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me, against him to destroy him without cause. God says, in your prowling, devil, did you happen to see my servant Job? Because you said, if I would allow some of his wealth and stuff to be lost, that he'd curse me. And you heard him, and you did take that stuff. But he has remained true to me. Did you notice that, devil? Oh, there's no one quite like Job, Satan. So God was saying, verse 4, And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. In other words, Satan says, Even a man like Job will do what he has to do to save his own life. And if he's in danger of losing the quality of his life, he is going to curse you to your face. That's what he says. Look at verse 5. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. The devil says, you take away Job's health, he'll curse you for sure, God. Nobody likes you, God. Are you kidding me? They just serve you because of what you give them. And that includes Job. 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So God here grants the devil permission to take Job's health. But he still can't kill Job. God's not finished with Job yet. 7. So, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils 
from the sole of his foot unto his crown. So Job is blasted with boils of some sort, maybe ulcers, boils all over his body. And you know how much boils hurt. Maybe you don't. I haven't had a boil since I was a little kid. I don't know where, where you even get them from. But I remember that they are sore. Job had them all over his entire body, even on his feet, all the way up to the top of his head. And they all came from the devil. Verse 8, And he took a potsherd with which to scrape himself, and he sat down among the ashes. In other words, Job grabs a broken piece of pottery and scratches his itching, oozing sores as he sits on a pile of trash. 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Oh, and now you see why Satan did not kill Job's wife. He killed Job's ten children, but he did not kill his wife. And now you know why. Because he knew that he could control his wife's ungodly tongue. She encourages Job to respond sinfully to his troubles. Curse God and die. Yell at God, curse God, and let him kill you or kill yourself. What a wonderful wife. He should have dumped her years ago. 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. In other words, Job would not respond sinfully. Job said, I accept good things from God, so I must also accept bad things from him as well. 11. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place. Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, Zophar the Naamathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. So the friends of Job show up. These three friends come to keep him company and evidently to try to bring some comfort through all his trials. Well, 12. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they were every one, excuse me, and they tore every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. They couldn't believe their eyes when they first saw Job. He looked so bad didn't even look like him. 13. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spoke a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. So they all sat there in silence for an entire week. Didn't say a word, and they would have been better off if they had remained silent for the duration of their visit, because we're going to see what happens next, beginning in chapter 3. Study all of God's Word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, then pray for me and pray for God's Word. That makes you an immediate part of this ministry, and I'd appreciate that very much. Also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead that also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, so long.